Want to know what to do in St. Lucia? Don't worry, we've got you covered. In this video, we're going to give you some ideas about what you can do when you get bored with your fabulous St. Lucia Hotel and need to wander out, along with some practical travel tips. Let's go! The next two sections will cover some practical travel tips and some fun things to do in St. Lucia. But this next bit comes with a disclaimer. We did a lot of work and are confident in our hotel recommendations. That's what we're really good at. Travel tips aren't our specialty. These are just things we gleaned while in St. Lucia with a large dose of subjectivity added in. These next parts don't pretend to be exhaustive and probably contain some inaccurate information. So you might want to do a bit more homework before you hop on that flight to St. Lucia. Here are some things you might want to do. Hiking would be my go-to activity in St. Lucia. There are great hiking trails, especially on the south end around the World Heritage Pitons. The area around the Pitons is protected, as well as the coral reefs with 168 species of fish. If there's one must-do on St. Lucia, hike the Gros or Petit Piton. It's not easy. Our guide told us only 60 to 70% of people make it to the top. There's a trail the whole way and rope railings for the really steep bits. It's not serious mountaineering, but it's not easy either. The walk up can take 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on what shape you're in or how much you drank last night. And it's always faster if you quit halfway through. Anyway, if you make it to the top, the views are great. And here's a pro tip. Our hotel ripped us off, I think. I'm not recommending the hotel that ripped us off, but that's because of interior design crimes, not the being ripped off part. Anyway, we paid 400 bucks for four people to go on a tour of Gros Piton. This included a 10 minute taxi ride, a pathetic bag of food, and a guide once we got there. The guides work for the Piton's park service, not the hotel. So if you decide to organize the outing yourself, you're still required to pay the $30 per person. So if you can arrange your own taxi and pay the guides directly, you're probably looking at 150 to 180 US dollars for a group of four versus the $400 that we paid. From what I can tell from a TripAdvisor forum, some people say a guide is mandatory, some say it's not, so I'm not sure. But TripAdvisor is always my go-to site for contradictory information. Don't forget to bring plenty of water and try to go around seven or eight in the morning when it's cooler. And note, dogs are not allowed on the trail. Getting there, hiking the round trip, Maybe a quick lunch should take about half a day, assuming you're coming from the south end of the island. If you want something more mellow, there's the Tet Paul Trail that has views of both pitons. If you want more info on that, there's a link below to the alltrails.com site for this walk. Alltrails.com is a great resource for hiking. On the south end of the island, you'll also find the Drive-In Volcano. Honestly, I was disappointed. I was expecting something spectacular and got a bit of a Marscape with sulfur fumes. Anyway, you be the judge. And right before the volcano is the Sulfur Springs and Mud Baths Twofer. They charge a nominal fee. It's not really my scene, but people look to be having fun. In terms of waterfalls, there's one near the volcano called Superman Falls but my driver said this one is better. I wonder if it was just a coincidence that we stopped on the way and dropped off a package at his brother's house. Then there's snorkeling and diving. Some pretty good diving off Ansi Koshan Beach. See our review of Tikai Resort for a bit more info on that. And we also snorkeled when we were at the Cat Maison Resort, and that was nice. I'm sure there are other great diving venues, but I'm trying to stick to stuff I actually experienced. 
How about touring a cacao plantation? I enjoyed my tour of the chocolate plantation at Project Chocolat. The Fondue Resort also does a cacao plantation tour, but my guess is Project Chocolat is better. Not only do you get to learn how cacao is grown, harvested, and turned into chocolate, you also get to make your own chocolate with the bonus of taking a walk through the plantation and learning about some of the local flora. Then you can skip the Diamond Falls Botanical Gardens unless you're really into plants. This is my last things to do, or in this case, things not to do tip for St. Lucia. This doesn't seem to me like a place where you wanna hang out in this city as much. We drove through the capital of Castries. This is where the massive cruise ship stock. It didn't look great and you run the risk of being swamped by the fanny pack and Crocs crowd. I did check out Soufrere, which is in the major town in the south, and I was ready to leave after about 10 minutes. Rodney Bay is in the north. It's more modern, but doesn't have much charm, but at least it does have a decent variety of restaurants. So when should you go? December to April are high season. The weather's good, but also expect to pay the most for hotels then. March and April are the driest and sunniest. Rainy season's June to November, and hurricanes are most likely in September and October, when I'm sure you can score a great deal, but with some risk. Diving is good most of the year with water temperatures between 78 and 82 Fahrenheit, or 26 to 28 degrees C. The water felt perfect to me in December and January. Here's a map of the resorts we're recommending. If you're gonna stay in one place, there's not a huge difference between the airport, probably 45 minutes to an hour for the hotels on the southwest side, where the Pitons are, and more like 90 minutes for the central and north end of the island. But if you wanna change hotels from north to south, or vice versa, allow at least a one and a half to two hours to get there. There's also a water taxi option from the airport to many of the resorts. We didn't do it, but I can't help wondering if it would have been more relaxing and more fun than taking the curvy, bumpy car ride. I'd only consider this if you're going to the north end of the island. I doubt you'll save time or money, but maybe you'll have more fun and see more of the island. The currency is the East Caribbean dollar, used in all these countries. People were happy to take USD or ECD, and my guess is Euros or British Pounds would be okay too. But I don't know that for sure. Most hotel bills will be in USD. In terms of electricity, it's 240 volts, and they use UK standard plugs like this. Some, but not all the hotels, also have US style sockets, but usually not many. In terms of safety, according to the UK government, most visits are trouble-free. My family and I felt safe, but we didn't hang out in the cities much. Use common sense as you would in any unfamiliar situation. Worldnomads.com says crime rates are low, but if you want to dig into that a bit, there's a link below to their article. Probably the biggest risk you take is driving or being driven on the windy roads with drivers who have not changed their tires in a while. Cars sliding backwards on a steep hill is a St. Lucia thing when it rains. It happened to us. So try to make sure you're with a good driver who has some tread left. Four wheel drive is always a good option if you're going far. I'd also advise not walking on the roads at night. Sidewalks are not really a St. Lucian thing either. In terms of driving, St. Lucia is part of the British Commonwealth, so they drive on the left side. Renting a car is also an option for you. I loved St. Lucia. The only thing that's missing is a vibrant foodie scene, but they more than make up for it with a welcoming Rastafarian vibe, some fun excursions, and some great beaches. Pick your resort wisely. If you want even more information about St. Lucia, we've put together a free PDF available on our website here with a bit more detail, like a map of all our hotel wrecks with drive times from the International Airport, a list of transportation services, and a few more practical travel tips. Remember, we're supported by our viewers, not the hotels we review. 
So help us out by smashing that like button and why not subscribe?